In Star Wars Last Jedi, there is a shot on the island planet of Octu where we see that Luke's X-Wing, Red 5, is submerged underwater. When I first saw this, I thought three things. Good explanation of how Luke got to the island. Very cool, bro. It's like when it was submerged in Empire Strikes Back. And three, it's probably a plot device that will be used later in the movie. A Chekhov's gun, if you will, for Luke to leave the island. I assumed. And also, as a continuation of that, I wondered how well it would function if it were to be pulled up out of the ocean after years of being there, but that's beside the point. Then when we see Luke appear on Crate, I thought that he got there via the X-Wing. That later turned out not to be the case, and we realized that he was astral projecting himself across the galaxy using the Force. Cool. So the question remains, why did Ryan Johnson choose to show Luke's X-Wing underwater if he wasn't going to fulfill on it being flown? As the classic plot device Chekhov's gun states... You don't show that a character has a gun unless you plan on having them fire it. So it would follow that you wouldn't show a character having an X-Wing unless you plan on having them fly it. But there are several reasons why I believe this works in the movie. Like I said, before it gives an explanation of how Luke got to the island and that he has no plan of leaving. We see this scene through Ray's point of view on her tour with Luke of his day-to-day -day life on the island, and she sees that Luke doesn't want to leave, which creates a problem for her mission of recruiting him for the Resistance. The X-Wing's appearance also serves as a plausible explanation that the audience could give to rationalize how Luke got to create before we realize the true method, um, which this gives us a knowledge of the means that he has to travel there. So from that angle, the gun is fired, the plot use of the X-Wing is fulfilled, it has a purpose, and that purpose is as a red herring. Okay. So another highly probable factor as to why it was included is that it was a re Easter egg in fan service, which is likely true, and even if it has other storytelling importance, it works well in the scene in that way. But then we get to the Rise of Skywalker. And let me just say that I don't think the reason Ryan Johnson put the X-Wing in the water in The Last Jedi was that he knew in Episode Nine Rey would be stranded on Ock 2 because she burned Kylo Ren's X-Wing, so she needed a ship to leave. I think that the developments with it in Rise of Skywalker came later because J.J. Abrams picked up on what he could use from The Last Jedi for his scene in The Rise of Skywalker, but I don't think he did it enough. And even though the scene in The Rise of Skywalker is trying to give a nod and fulfill something from the original trilogy, I don't think he paid enough attention to what they were doing there either. Let me explain. So in the original trilogy, Luke tried to lift the X-Wing and fails, and only when he fails does Yoda lift the X-Wing for him, to teach a lesson to Luke. This is where the do or do not, there is no try thing comes in. In this scene, the protagonist tries to do something, fails, and then the master has to do it, when, which demonstrates their power. Not the master doing it without giving the learner the main character of a story a chance to do it, as is done in The Rise of Skywalker. What I'm saying is, Rey should have lifted the X-Wing, at least, or at least tried. Luke's time is done. He's dead, and so is his character development. Watching this scene out of context, you would think that Luke is the main character of the movie, not Rey. This is like if Yoda came back in The Last Jedi, and instead of teaching Luke who was in... Who in that movie was an important character with the development. Yoda went off to beat the Emperor because he was un unable to do that in Revenge of the Sith. Same thing, just has higher stakes than lifting the X-Wing. Or more accurately, it's like if they put Luke in the Force Cave again in Rise of Skywalker and he beats Vader. These are very similar because while neither of these things happened in the original trilogy, they were fulfilled upon. In Return of the Jedi, Luke beats Vader and the Emperor, or he's able to turn Vader to the light side. And when he goes back to see Yoda, he says, Yoda says his training is complete. So Luke wasn't able to lift the X-Wing in Empire Strikes Back because it cows, cast doubt on his skills if he would be able to defeat Vader right before he fought him. Something they could have done with Rey in Rise of Skywalker and even gotten the same moment with Luke lifting it, but they didn't. I just wish that they would have used this obvious moment for some development for the protagonist, not just for cheap fan service. I think the real reason for this is that J.J. Abrams and maybe Mark Hamill as well didn't like what they did with Luke in The Last Jedi and wanted some epic Jedi scene for him that would give a call back to the original trilogy. Mark Hamill even appears to be looking right at the camera and smiling in the scene. Well, you got your scene, and it's really annoying, and I hate it. Uh, by the way, the music of this scene also sucks and makes no sense. The Yoda lifts it in the Empire Strikes Back. Romero Belgard, the music editor, he said, oh, it should be exactly the music that we had for Yoda. And actually, JJ questioned it. He said, well, is that, should we be doing that right? And everybody said, oh, yes, it has to be. It's, you know, the fans will all know. So we went back to the score, 
of Empire Strikes Back to get those bars exactly out of them. That actual little central piece of taking the ship up is exactly as we had it before. JJ was right. Another thing about that scene that's completely whack-a-mole. In The Last Jedi, some of the expanded materials said that Luke burned the X-Wing before he put it underwater. Not so in this movie. Not so. Uh, and also, like, in Last Jedi, Yoda is all like, oh, they are what we grow beyond. The whole quote about the the students becoming better than the masters. But they're like, nah, to that in Rise of Skywalker. We're just going to have Luke be better because no nah, progression. Who cares about that, right? I also just want to say that I really liked Rise of Skywalker overall. I just think it is really cool how Rey flies Red 5 and the scene is very close to re- recreation of when Yoda lifted the X-Wing. That's awesome from a filmmaking standpoint. I just hadn't heard so many people doing a video, so I wanted to give my comments on that and why I think they should have had Ray lift the X-Wing instead of Luke. But that's the main point of this video. I know it was a long rant about nothing. I'm sorry. Anyway, thanks for watching, and stay connected.